Okay, uh, good morning students. Uh, uh, it's good to have you ready, uh, logged in already. And we want to go ahead and have our session for today. Uh, so uh, let's uh, start by uh, what we always do to confirm that uh, audio is uh, clear on your end. Uh, Karibuni sana, all of you that are already logged in. At this time, that's good. Uh, uh, you've uh, uh, logged in in good time. So all of you, uh, it's uh, encouraging to have all of you in. Uh, so uh, let's have, uh, uh, okay, yes, uh, thank you, thank you. Um, I can see a confirmation that the audio is uh, coming out uh, clearly on your end. So we will we want to start by looking at um, or concluding uh, the previous uh, class, we had uh, started looking at uh, uh, the critical path concept, and we say that the critical path uh, is uh, there are tools that are used uh, for handling that critical path is part of the uh, project management, uh, um, man uh, managing the especially uh, what we call a uh, resource scheduling and time management uh, so we'll be looking at that we already looked at uh, uh, one of the approaches that uh, are used uh, for drawing the network diagrams we talked about the two uh, ways of uh, uh, drawing the network diagrams the activity on arrow and activity on a node and uh, we did discuss uh, in good length of time uh, about uh, activity on arrow so we now want to conclude on activity on a uh, node we already started looking at that as well uh, but uh, we did not conclude so we want to go ahead and uh, look at that activity on node as another approach to drawing the network diagrams uh, and so uh, let me open the document that uh, we will uh, use uh, for that. We already looked at it, but uh, I've tried to make a few changes uh, so that uh, we are able to use it for our discussion, for especially for the sake of uh, the display. Uh, so let me share that. So the critical path and uh, network diagrams. Okay, well, the system uh, looks good, so we should be able to get uh, this one sharing quickly, and uh, there it is. So uh, let me have a confirmation that you can see it on your end. The document. Yes, so um, yes, so the document is already showing on your end. Thank you so much for several of the students are already confirming that. Uh, okay, and is Karanti Silva there and Owino? Thank you so much. But uh, we need to zoom. Uh, yes, uh, Owino, uh, you need to do the zooming uh, so that uh, it is clear enough. At least. Uh, make sure that um, the text is clear so we uh, try to expand it uh, by zooming so let's see if i can make it uh, sorry sorry i think i touched the wrong thing all right uh, so try to move it to the central part there all right so uh, we will just go right into the looking at the diagram. Uh, it's uh, right towards the mid, the bottom of my page here. Now there are some concepts that uh, I'll come back uh, to later. Let's first for look at the diagram. So we talked about the arrow diagramming method, and we looked at this diagram, which is showing here arrow diagramming method. Of course, is uh, is a bit uh, exaggerated uh, because of the zooming. But this is a, our activity on arrow 
where we say that uh, you draw the arrow and you label the activity on the arrow so that the arrow indicates the start and end of an activity and then also the nodes therefore actually are the ones which uh, indicate uh, the end the start and end of an activity uh, is the nodes and then the the actual activity the the label is on the arrow uh, and you put the activity uh together with the the duration for that particular activity and then we did say that uh, finally the diagram uh is a uh, uh, you know um, takes a certain uh, a shape uh because of uh, uh the dependencies that may be there what are the relationship between the activities and there are some activities that have to be completed before others can be started uh, so there is a, a kind of a, a dependency and that dependency is what uh, causes uh, the diagram to uh, take a certain uh, shape and we did say also that uh, the the shape of the diagram the, uh, the the final shape of the diagram uh, is not really an issue uh, there is no uh, correct shape uh, what is important is that uh, your diagram indicates correct relationship of the activities and uh, so so this is the uh, activity on arrow and we also did uh, start uh, looking at the activity on node uh, which uh, this a uh, um, uh, this uh, document also has a uh, has a diagram uh, an example diagram which is based on the same information that uh, is used to draw the activity on arrow so we have uh, this diagram here uh, let me go to this one because actually there is a uh, two diagrams but uh, we are especially uh, sorry i think uh, my scrolling is not uh, going very well let me try to get to that diagram uh, sorry for that uh, so this diagram here uh, is a it is a kind of diagram that we expect when you do activity on node so now the node is where you label the activity so and the nodes of course uh, you can use uh, any shape that uh, you feel uh, is best for you uh, so i think there is uh, uh, something is uh, causing us an error here so let's see i hope it will not uh, create a problem for us uh, let's try to reload the the document again uh, some problem there happened all right let's uh, look for the diagram again so um all right so i'm trying again to focus it in the middle okay that's i think it's too big reduces the zoom a little it's a bit humid so my mouse pad here is uh, having a challenge sometimes it's a uh, not uh, grabbing the what i want to to drag very well okay So sorry for that let's uh, get uh, that diagram again i think uh, better uh, scroll a bit uh, slowly uh, but the diagrams are also creating a challenge all right uh, The diagram is uh, creating a challenge uh, for my software here. There it is.
Well, uh, the weather is a bit humid, so seems like I'm having a challenge with my mouse here. Not scrolling very well. Well, I better keep it that way. So this uh, diagram um, uh, is uh, an example of a uh, uh, activity on a node. And I, I was just about to say that the, the nodes can take uh, uh, different shapes, but uh, mainly uh, either it's a circle or it's a, it's a rectangle, or it could be a novel, because a novel is uh, uh, similar to talking about a circle. Uh, but uh, uh, the, the the rectangle makes it a little easier to draw and uh, put your values without too much challenge. But uh, we did also say that uh, when you start drawing your uh, your diagram, uh, once you do a diagram, of course uh, you don't draw the whole diagram, uh, you know, all together. You you go node by node according to uh, the information that you have. Uh, and that which you are using to draw your network diagram. So uh, you go node by node from the start end or the the the, the side of uh, the start uh, when you are starting your to draw your diagram. So of course there is a starting point uh, which we also call the start or the beginning. But uh, normally I think the word start is uh, more common. So when you and of course the start is not. Uh, part of the activities, it's just uh, uh, an indication that this is where uh, the process starts. So once you draw the starting point, then from there now you draw your first and nodes or nodes could be one or it could be several. So what are your starting nodes? And uh, we did say that the nodes that we normally start with are the nodes which have no pre uh, predecessors. So predecessors or predecessors. Uh, and uh, I think uh, just uh, to refer us back to this table, because uh, it's the one which is uh, we have, we, we base, or it is, this uh, diagram is based on the information in a table. So let me just uh, once again uh, uh, display this table, which is the one which uh, our, our diagram is based on. It's the same that we use for uh, also drawing the activity on arrow, uh, but I think it's sort of a bit big. Uh, so it's still, uh, it's not fitting very well here. So let's see if we can uh, reduce its size. Uh, but of course, uh, I, but I think it's uh, clear because I think we have all of it uh, here. All right, so this diagram, uh, this, this table is the one to each, which is giving us information that we are using to draw our network diagram. And we did say that you can be given this information in the form of a table, but sometimes it's just a text which you have to read and uh, and uh, uh, interpret. But if it's a table, I think it is easier because uh, you know the information is very clear that these are the activities uh, and they're given some labels, A, B, C, D, up to J. The duration is given this time we realize that uh, uh, originally, this uh, data was uh, saying that this duration is in days, and then the precedence. So the precedence say which activity. Okay, so if you look at uh, the line for A, so then you go to the to the side of the precedence is saying which activity do I need to do before doing A. So uh, so that's uh, the, the the relationship that we are talking about. The dependence is uh, relationships. So. Uh, in our case here, it says that there is no activity that need to be done uh, before A in order for you then to do the A. So A is not depending or dependent on any other activity for it to be started. Uh, that's uh, the same thing with B. So when we look at the precedence uh, column, is that B does not depend on any activity for it to be started. Uh, the same with the C, no precedent. When we come to D, we find that there is a, an activity that is a, at the precedent column. So what this means is that uh, D is dependent on A. If D is dependent on A, 
and we talk about the predecessors and successors uh, you need to capture those words predecessor means that this one must be must come before so pre, 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 uh, the precedent or the predecessor uh because uh, uh, this word is uh, uh, also uh, borrowed from that precedence predecessor so what must come before the other one so a comes before b means that a must be done first and completed before d can be done uh, some of these things that uh, we we find in uh, in life and uh, i think it's a, a good analogy to give uh, you know the African uh, the Kenyan uh, families, especially we uh, we make uh, a meal called ugali, uh, whatever you normally call it uh, uh, in your own pronunciation. Ugali uh, is that uh, you 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 put the the water first before you put the flour. Uh, so uh, of course uh, the, that's uh, the way we normally do it. Um, that uh, you put uh, the water first and of course uh, it's not just putting the water the way i have known about uh, that meal is that uh, you actually put the water and you let it boil completely before then you can add the uh the the unga now those that's what we are talking about the precedent so you need to have put uh, uh, the, and of course, uh, uh, in that in that process of making the ugali, so if you're saying, okay, this is a task of making the ugali, so now you follow the act. What are the various things that are going to be done, uh, you know, in this process? So uh, there are things that need to be done before others can start or can be done, and those are what we are calling the precedent. So A needs to be done and completed before you can start d you can never start d until a is done and completed so the same case the relationship between e and b here is that b must be done and completed before you can start doing e etc and so that's what we're saying those are considerations are uh, essentially what makes the diagram take a, a, a particular shape but there is no correct shape no uh, wrong shape as long as uh, your diagram is showing the correct dependencies of the activities uh, and so finally then uh, when we go to those two uh, methods uh, so we already, already looked at uh, the one of um, uh, arrow diagramming uh, so we're now looking at uh, how we go about doing the one of uh, uh, we, we what we are calling the activity on a node so these activities uh, then uh, we say now the ones which don't have uh, precedence are normally the ones which uh, we start with or at least those are the ones which you, of course uh, even in the real life those are the ones which you would start with uh you know when the project uh, takes off and we also normally put them in our diagram as the first nodes uh, after the the start node uh, so if they are not uh, they have no precedence then you start with them and then uh, so we have three that don't have uh, precedence and so uh, the a b and c we start with those ones even in our diagram and then now from there is uh, to say now what are the values uh, in your table now when we do activity on node uh, you don't have to put these uh, these values there, but uh, normally uh, it's, a, it's a tradition that if you do activity on node, that uh, you also accommodate uh, some more information in your diagram. And this information is what we call uh, the, uh, of course, the duration. So the the name of the activity and its duration. So the way I've drawn these uh, boxes is that my first uh, column in the uh, in uh, in my box the first column has the uh, activity and its duration but uh, uh, sometimes uh, and uh, the more popular way of uh, drawing these diagrams actually is to have the activity uh, in the middle uh, and of course uh, you can use uh, either, either of these so you could have the activity at the middle column uh, so but for for this diagram I put the activity in the first column 
which is completely okay. Now, uh, together with that, therefore, the other information that we put on our node is the early uh, early times, what we normally call the earliest times and the latest times. So let me just uh, put that one somewhere for the sake of uh, um, communication. So we have earliest So we have called we have earliest times which go at the top row of your of your diagram uh, of your node so the and of course again uh, this one it may be different when we use a, a circle but for if you use a box then the top values here we will indicate the what we are calling the earliest times now these earliest times are called uh as start normally they are written in capitals earliest start time and earliest finish times okay earliest start and earliest finish so those are the ones we come at uh, the top here now uh so when you come to the first activity here uh there is a, a bit of controversy which we said the last time is that when you come to the first activities that start the first, the activities that could start on day one because they are not dependent on anything any other activity so there was the issue about should i put one or should i put zero and so there is that uh, debate but it uh, both are like, accepted as long as you understand yourself their meaning so for my case here i have chosen to use one as my first number the activities that start on the first day i have chosen to call it one but other diagrams uh, there is also the concept of putting it as a zero of course zero means that uh, you are starting at day zero uh you know you start with the day, day zero and then you you use up day one now uh you have to be keen on the understanding uh when, when if you use one uh, what do you mean? So in this case, I mean start your uh, your work at day one, at the start of day one. Of course, I must uh, I must explain it. Uh, you know, in a kind of a, just explaining in speech. And I say, uh, what I mean is that this is uh, the, you are starting at the start of day one, and then com you know continuing throughout that day one. Yeah, and then, then of course, so how, how do you follow from that? Now that understanding is going to be important to be able to fill in the other values that follow. Now, if you see, if you put zero, you are saying that you start at the end of day zero. Of course, uh, somebody said it is not as uh, you know very very uh, obvious what that may mean. So if you put zero there, you are saying uh, start at the end of day zero and then now you, you you continue with day one you know you will do your work in day one because you have started your work at day zero now you'll have to make a, a come up with a way of uh, explaining yourself what you mean if you start if you put your start number as one uh then in this case it means that of course you are starting your work at day one which of course means at the start of day one and then use up that day one to do some work. Uh, so if you use zero again, you need to be clear as to what you mean by putting zero as your first number here, which is your earliest start date. Now remember here, we're not talking about the calendar dates. We are only saying that the times of the project. Either it's, uh, you can now if we are talking in days, then it is day one. If you are talking in weeks, then it is week one. If you are talking of the years, of course, that may not make much sense. Uh, but of course, it also depends on uh, how long. Maybe there are some projects, of course, that actually can take uh, quite a while. And you might say now you are you are you are uh, you, you are your figures are in years. Uh, but of course, the year and year is a, is a bit long, uh, and so maybe it may not be the best. So either it's I would uh, imagine you either use uh, days or weeks. And then your diagram will make uh you know we uh, will uh, probably uh give uh, more information 
All right, so uh, if we uh, agree that uh, let's uh, then have, uh, in this case, uh, we start our, our start number is one, meaning day one. So start at day one. Of course, we already, already did this, so it's more of a recap. So if you start at day one, uh, and this activity needs only one day, then of course, at the end of day one, it is complete, you know. So it is starts in day one and completes in, in day one, you know. Uh, so I think that is uh, quite uh, understandable. Uh, for this one, it starts in day one, and since it needs two days, then it concludes or it completes in day two. So day one and day two. So at the end of day two, it is done. Uh, this one needs three days. So if you started in day one, then you do some work in day one, and then you need to do some work in day two, and then you do some work in day three, and of course, it should be completed. Uh, well, there at least that is a, uh, the, the estimation uh, and the expected uh, uh, process there is that if you started in day one, then it will be completed in day three. So earliest start, earliest finish. So the top numbers are earliest start, earliest finish. Now, so from there you progress towards other activities. And of course, uh, uh, remembering which activities are dependent on which other activities. So uh, notice is also good if you can follow. Now, if you have num uh, you have numbered of your activities uh, A, B, C, D, it will become easier if you just go alphabetically. And so we started with A and B and C. Of course, those ones, all of them are at the starting point because they are not depending on any, any other. All of them can start in day one. And then, uh, then uh, we look at the table and we see that now, of course, D. So the next, so you already have A, B, C. So the next activity is a D. So then we go to the table and look at D and say, now, which uh, activity does D depend on? And we put D along that path. So if D depends on A, then it will be along the path of A. So we say, now, this is D. So A, A must complete, and once it is complete, then D can start. And so we put it there. And uh, then now, if A completes in day one, then D can start in day two. If there is nothing else uh, to prevent that, that is expectation. So if A completes in day one, then we are ready to start d at day two now d needs four four days to complete you know it's a the way it is a, allocated the time is that it needs four days you have when you start it it will uh, you know it will occupy the team for a whole four days and so if it starts in day two then if you do your calculation it will be finished at day five you say you start with the day. Of course, you can use your fingers. You can use your fingers and say, I started day two. And you say, so four days uh, needed. So day two, day three, day four, day five. Those will be four days. You can use your fingers for that at the beginning. But of course, we also did uh, discuss how to make it easier to fill in all these values and what we said is that take the start the start uh, date and add the duration take the start date uh, of course start date here we don't mean the the starting activity we are meaning the area start date of that particular activity so for a it is one add the duration and then subtract one then it gives you the next number the earliest finish the earliest finish so earliest start earliest finish so to calculate the earliest finish take the start the earliest start for that activity add one and subtract one so one plus one is two two minus one is one so that you can now fill the values 
a little more uh, faster. Uh, so I think we can add here, uh, how do you get earliest finish? Now, again, there is no mistake, even if you write these uh, uh, ES, EF in uh, small letters, there is, not, there is no, no, no rule about that. Uh, but uh, it's no more, uh, mostly preferred to use uh, uh, capitals. So EF, earliest finish, is equals to earliest start plus, plus duration. Uh, let me write it in full there. Duration, of course, is the activity duration, uh, the duration for that particular activity. So, duration for that particular activity, and then minus one. Okay, so that can make it faster. And uh, again, uh, in, uh, from the diagram, now remember, sometimes you don't have to fill these values in the diagram, uh, but it is best. Uh, the diagram makes, makes it easier, very easy to fill in these values. Earliest start, earliest finish. And of course, later on, we talk about latest start, late, latest finish. So if you go like that, then uh, you'll find it uh, very easy to fill in. So first of all, you need to capture very well if the, this activity ends in day one, then D can start in day two and continue up to day five. If D ends in day five, then it can continue. Uh, I mean, uh, H, of course, uh, uh, you need to remember how the, the table is, is saying. Of course, the table is saying that uh, H is uh, depends on, on D. So H cannot start until D is completed. And that's why it takes uh, uh, this path. Uh, but notice that it's also coming from the path of E, which uh, I think we also discussed. All right, but uh, going on. So if D starts uh, ends in day five, uh, now notice here there is a problem because uh, H does not start in day six as expected. Now, the reason is because H is also depending on E. Okay? According to the table, uh, to the table, of course, uh, you have to remember that uh, H is also depending on E, but uh, let me just uh, uh, remind us of that. Let's uh, just uh, visit the table just briefly on that. And uh, you see that uh, we, we are saying the H, according to the table, activity H is said to be to, to depend. So this is the H, and it is said to depend on both D and E. So that's the reason why there is now a challenge there, and which we are going to see how do we deal with that situation? So when we come to, to look at the values for H, H depends both on D as well as on E. And what it means is that uh, those both of those activities must all be complete before H can start. And so the activity that delays longer determines when H will start okay so even if you finish uh, d at day five but e is not complete according to here is that of course uh, assuming that uh, these uh, values are correct is that e will be started at day three and will not be complete until day seven okay it will not be complete until day seven of course uh, notice that e now is coming from the path of b and so that is what is uh, uh, bearing these values. So from, from B to E. So uh, E does not complete until day seven. And therefore, since both D and E must complete for H to start, that's why uh, H must wait until day eight to start. It waits when E is completed in day seven, then H can start on day eight. So you notice that when our an activity is dependent on several activities, the one which is uh, going to take the longest to be completed will determine when that next activity can start. And so for H, it has to, st to start at day eight earliest. Remember, this is earliest times. So it, it, the earliest it can start is on uh, uh, day eight. Now, H 
needs six days to to be done. So once it starts, it has to be worked on for a whole six days for it to be completed. So again, now we use now the mathematics to move faster, and we say that get get the earliest time, earliest start, add the duration, and subtract one. So eight plus six is fourteen. Fourteen minus one is thirteen, and that's why the uh, the earliest finish for H is 13. Now we have another case, a similar case when we go to J. Now, of course, uh, from the table, it must be saying that J depends on H, but it also depends on two other activities according to this diagram. And of course, uh, this is coming from the table. So when we try to fill in the values for J, we have to consider that it is dependent on H, is also dependent on F, it is also dependent on I. So again, for the sake of uh, uh, seeing this one, let's uh, just visit the table a bit. Uh, although it's uh, quite a challenge to move uh, uh, these uh, diagrams uh, on the screen here. But yes, I think that's enough because we are looking at J. So J, it is dependent on F, H, and I. So that's why the diagram is looking like that. So remember that, that that diagram is based on this table. It is a table that gives you the diagram. So uh, according to the, the table is that you have to complete F, you have to complete H, you have to complete I before you can start to work on the J activity. So again, the one which is going to take the longest in terms of when it is completed the one so it's not the duration of uh, how long it is needing to be done it is saying when will it be completed the one which will be completed the latest will de determine when j can start and that's why our diagram is looking the way it is so let me get back there So that's why our diagram is looking like this. So between, uh, uh, of course, uh, assuming that uh, all these values have been co calculated correctly for H, for F, and for I. Okay, the, the top row, uh, the top values are at each activity. You notice that uh, uh, H completes on the 13, F, completes on day seven and I completes on day 11. So among those three activities that affect J, the one which is completed the latest is the H activity. It completes on day 13. So when the, when the project is started, H completes on the day 13 of the process. And so it is. Uh, so for for, for J for R uh, for for the J, activity H is the one which will determine when J will start. So if H completes in day thirteen, then J can start now on day fourteen. So that's how we fill in these values, uh, uh, and especially those that are depending uh, dependent on uh, uh, more than one activity, we have to be very keen as to which day they will start. So if they are depending on uh, more than one activity, then their start time will be dependent on the activity uh, the, the, the activity that they depend on, uh, the one which completes the latest among us those it depends on. And so J uh, starts on day 14. Now it needs three days to do. So again, uh, mathematically we do 14 plus three is 17, 17 minus one is 16. So it's earliest start, earliest finish dates. So it's 14 and 16. Now this process that we are doing for filling earliest start and the latest start dates. So earliest start, earliest finish dates 
we fill them by doing what we call a forward pass. Fill values. by doing forward pass. Forward pass. So few values by doing forward pass. Now what we mean uh, essentially is to move, is moving the process from the start end to the to the finish end. So that's a forward pass. Now, the other values are called earliest start, I mean, latest start, latest finish. Uh, so I hope uh, this system will allow me to uh, do that. I just put, uh, so there is a uh, earliest, no, latest. So latest start, latest finish so let us uh, start let us finish uh, values uh, so uh, i'm just going to borrow some part of the top uh, statement and uh, indicate that for this one do it by doing what is called a backward pass So fill the the, the 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 latest start and the latest finish values by doing a backward pass. The backward pass means now start from the finish end and move uh, you know node by node to the start end. So from finish to start end is a backward pass. Now, so what what uh, what we mean is that sometimes some uh, some activities might can give an allowance that they can actually be delayed starting you can actually finish uh, an earlier activity and uh, and uh, you you don't start immediately it, it has a, a kind of a, um, um you know a, it, uh, it has an allowance you can you can actually delay starting from you don't have to start immediately you can delay so that's what uh, causes uh, this concept of doing a backward pass. All these uh, statements called latest start, latest finish. Uh, so, um, so how do you do that? Now you start from the finish end. And now, of course, you cannot therefore do a backward pass before you do the forward pass. Because you must move uh, in a forward uh, direction, start to the finish, until you come to the finish. So you must do that until you come to the finish in order to do a backward pass. So fill the values that are necessary. You know, the ES, EF values must be filled fast and completed. And of course, fill the completely all the nodes uh, before you can do the backward pass. Now, once you have done the forward pass and uh, you have filled in all the values up to the finish point, now you can do the backward pass and start filling the latest start dates, the latest finish dates. Uh, so um, now uh, we are talking about uh, uh, latest uh, start, latest finish. So we need to just uh, highlight that concept here. So what are these latest? Uh, so I think I need to adjust my text. So latest, uh, uh, la what we call latest times. Uh, the latest start ls of course we already wrote this one latest start and the latest finish dates okay so i will also do some arithmetic here to help us to move faster in that work how to fill these values so you go now to the finish end and of course, finish end, it means that go to the, the finishing activity, in, the, in our case is J, so go to the finishing activity, and now start moving backwards. Of course, you have to take path by path. So for example, if you move the path from J back to H, 
o J back to F o J back to I. Of course, you have made to take those parts one by one, one at a time. So assuming that uh, we want to start by filling the values along the J to H direction. So from J to H direction, uh, so what are we saying? Uh, so start with the last last activity. So the values of the last act activity at the top here are also borrowed to fill the bottom spaces here. The latest start and the latest, latest finish dates. So uh, 14 and uh, 16 are the latest. Uh, so 14 is latest start and 16 is latest finish. They should be exactly the same as uh, the top values. So um, so once you have filled the, the top values for J, they are the same. If this is the last activity in the, in the, in the process, then the, the values that you filled for earlier start and latest start, I mean, earlier start and earliest finish, sorry. Um, earliest start and earliest finish, those values will be the same as, the same for latest start, latest finish. Of course, you just use the same values as you have filled the, the above values. You fill them at the lower uh, values or the as, uh, the values for the lower part of uh, your values that you need to fill in. So what we mean here is that when is the latest the latest time that we can start activity J? So that is what it, it means by latest uh, latest start. And then there is the latest finish. You say, when is the latest uh, finish time? When when should we finish J latest? And that is what it means to say latest finish. So when is the latest that uh, we can uh, we, we can uh, finish J? When is the, the latest that we can start J? In other words, uh, you are considering is there an allowance? Suppose there was an allowance. So when is when is the latest uh, date that we can start J? Uh, but so for J being the last activity, we automatically just borrow the same values that are above, and we fill them at the bottom. So the latest, earliest, earliest times are the same as latest, latest times for the last activity. Now from there now. We can move on. Now we are filling the latest times, and so now our, our focus is on the lower values here. These boxes, like uh, I have not filled uh, yet for uh, for this uh, activity called uh, A here. So uh, you see, this is empty, but the others have been filled up, of course. But that is what all of them should have been looking like before we do the backward pass. They would all be having empty boxes uh, uh, at the beginning uh, until now. You start doing your backward pass. So when you start doing your backward pass, and that was what we have said, the last activity, the value should be the same top and bottom. And then now, what does it mean? Since we are now looking at, we are filling the latest times, we are now focusing on the lower values, filling the lower values. Now, what does uh, Jay tell us? Jay is saying that the latest it should be started is day 14. The latest that it must be started is day 14. So if J must start on day 14 latest, then when should we end the activities that it is depending on? So you have to ask ourselves that question. So when is the latest that we must finish activity H? When is the latest that we must finish activity F? When is the latest that you must finish activity I? Because when, when they are finished, that's when J will be able to be started. We cannot start J until H, F, and I are completed. And that is why we are now asking ourselves that question. So if J must start on day 14, then H must complete on day 13 latest. And that's why we are feeding uh, a, a 13 here. Uh, the same, of course, uh, for these other activities as well. 
uh, in this case, even if it must, even if it delays by day 13, must be latest. It must be completed by day 13 so that J can start. The same for, for I. I must be completed latest by the 13 to enable J to start. Uh, and so that's why we have those values. So it's just uh, that uh, 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 kind of a simple argument. If J must start on day 14, then H must be completed by day 13. It could start, it could be completed earlier if there, there is an allowance, but at the latest, at the latest, it must complete by day 13. Uh, the F must also complete by the 13 latest. And I must complete by the 13 latest so that we can allow J to be started. And so now we move backwards, that is called backward pass. So of course you take uh, one path one at a time. Uh, so uh, from J, maybe you want to start by filling in for H. And so when you come to H there, so it must complete latest by 13. And now you have to, to calculate the other value. Now, if uh, H must complete by 13, so when should it have been started? So that's what you ask yourself to be able to fill in the other values, the uh, latest start value. So if uh, uh, H has to complete by 13 and it needs six days. Okay, it needs six days. So if you have to complete by the 13, when should it have started? And so now we count backwards. So again, uh, so you can use your fingers to start with if you want. Uh, you put uh, six fingers uh, uh, countable, you know, spread them six fingers and start uh, going backwards, you say 13, uh, so 13, 12, 11, because you are going backwards, 11, 10, day 10, day 9, and for it to be six days, day 8 will be, you have to start in day eight, day 6, and not me, day 8, so that you have uh, six days from day 8 to day 13. So you have to, to have, uh, it has to start, uh, for you to have six days, uh, including uh, 13, uh, you have to start at day 8. So that is finger-wise, but uh, mathematically, uh, of course, you also can make it faster uh, mathematically. So again, uh, can I can just uh, describe how you can also do that mathematically. Now let me bring this uh, statement up here. Okay, so mathematically, uh, we can also borrow the, a similar approach for uh, as we did uh, with the the ES, ES and EF. So this one, what you do uh, now? This time, you have the you have uh, you you first of all uh, get the finish date. Uh, sorry, I'm getting. In a short while, let me just uh, check if somebody is asking something. Hello?
Okay, we are we are we are back. Uh, so um, we are saying that uh, uh, these values you when it comes to the backward pass, what you have initially is uh, uh, the latest start value, which you you do by argument practically. So that one you do by argument, like we said, if if uh, if uh, J must start on day fourteen. Then the date, the activity that it depends on must add on the 13 latest. So you normally have the latest date, to, and then you calculate from that, you calculate the latest start. And so we have, uh, so latest start is what we should be, we will be calculating. In this case, when you do the backward pass, so latest, uh, so let me make it capital there, latest. Uh, start or oh, there will be equals to so what you have is the latest finish date you'll be able to do that by argument so you have the latest finish date and of course, of course it's almost a uh, reversing the one which you had we had earlier here so again uh, you have the duration so uh so we if you have uh, 13 is our latest date we are now trying to, to get uh, the latest start so again we have the duration so this time we accurate subtract. Okay. So of course, uh, if you know, you want to know uh, when uh, did you start. So of course, this is now uh, a kind of a, a subtraction. So get the latest date, subtract the duration. Uh, all right. Now, so you subtract the duration. Subtract the duration, but that will not give you a correct value. You need to subtract to add one. Sorry. Okay, so I'm pressing the wrong button. Yes, yeah. surplus one. All right. Uh, compare that with the the one we did for earliest times. So with the one for the earliest earliest times. Uh, you notice that we started by we, we added the duration and then subtracted. So for the latest start, this time the mathematics is subtract the duration and add. So it, they go the opposite. Where you had a plus, now it's a minus uh, etc. And so uh, by now mathematics. So once you uh, get latest date by argument by just arguing by half. To start uh, to to, come, to to start this one this date then the other one must add this this date so we have 13 now and then you subtract six that is uh, uh, eight is it no 13 minus six is seven so 13 minus six is seven then plus one will give you eight so from there now you can do it the mathematics is uh, it makes it uh, a little faster to fill in these values. But uh, if uh, you want to use the fingers, you can always use them. Uh, but I think it's uh, easier. You can move faster. All right, so you say use the same argument. So you are moving backwards. Now, from H, already remember you already have done the diagram from the, uh, the, the forward pass, you, already have, you should already have done the diagram. So the diagram is already existing. Now it's just moving through the paths backwards. Okay, now move from H to D. So from H to D, uh, so again, we say now, if H must start on day eight, eight is because it's the latest date, H must start on day eight. So when is the latest that D must, must complete? And of course, for, for H to start on day eight, then uh, D must complete latest by day seven. So once uh, D is complete by day seven, then we can start h the following day which will be day eight and therefore the latest that d must be completed is day seven then mathematically seven minus four the duration for d is uh, three three plus one is four and so we put here four okay moving backwards from d to a and now this one is not filled so it's a good one uh to see whether we are uh, we are getting it right but let me first of all leave it to that that me 
us for uh, leave that gap and try now on a, a different path. Uh, let's uh, try the path of uh, uh, where? Uh, let's let's try this one now. J through F. Okay, J through F. So J uh, must be completed on day fourteen. And so the latest that F should be done, should have been complete, is on day 13. So 13 minus 4 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. So the LS of F is 10. And then now, if this is the latest that, this is the latest that F must start. It cannot start later than 10, day 10. Day 10, it, it's the latest that it must be started. Otherwise, it would delay J. So the latest it must be started is uh, day 10. All right, so day 10, then, um, uh, so that means, uh, okay, this one is also not filled in. So it means that uh, if you if you go by F, then the latest that uh, uh, activity B must start is day nine, okay? It must start by day nine. Now, that is going to be a problem because uh, there are two activities that are depending on B. Uh, F is that is depending on, on B, and E is also depending on, on, uh, on B. Now, assuming that uh, this part is filled correctly for E, and it says that, uh, of course, if it is a, must be uh, finished latest by seven, by day seven. So seven plus five, uh, okay, seven minus five is two. Two plus one is three. So let LS of E is, is uh, three. Now, assuming that these two values are correct, you know, for E and F. Now, F can delay up to day 10, but for uh, for E, it can only be delayed up to day three. So now moving backwards, the values for B will be dependent on which one here needs to start the earliest, which between E and, and F needs to start earliest. And therefore, going backwards, the one which must start earliest will determine when B should be finished. And so looking at the two, E needs to start on the, at day three. And F needs to start at day 10. The, earlier, the latest it can start is day 10. The latest this one can start is day three. Therefore now, E determines when B should be completed. All right. So uh, since it must start on the three, then the latest that B must be completed is day two. All right. It must be completed at day two. So the correct value here is not nine. If you go by F, it would be nine. But if you go by E, it should be two. So the correct value here is two and of course then you cannot do the mathematics and complete uh what is the ls for b uh, i think that uh, description is uh, sufficient for us to be able now to complete to do a, a complete uh um, a network diagram according to the activity on a node and filling in areas start and the uh, latest start times uh um, but, but now there is another issue that uh, come up. Now, this concept of uh, earliest start, latest start, and all that uh, bring up a concept called uh, the, the float. The float. Now, if an activity can be delayed, in, it's like it is depending on a, a certain activity, but even after that activity, depending on has finished, you don't have to start it immediately after the following day. It can be delayed. Now that delay, that you can delay the start of an activity, of course, they normally think in terms of the start. If you can delay a certain activity by a certain duration, 
uh, because it has that allowance, that allowance we call it the float. So the float is the number of days, is the is 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 amount of duration, of course, in this case, because it can be days, can be weeks. So it's the amount of duration that an, an activity can be delayed before starting it without affecting the activities that follow. It should not aff affect when the activities that are following should start, and it should also not delay the total completion of the whole project. So the, under the amount of duration that an activity can be delayed as, as, uh, before starting it without affecting when the uh, the next activity should be started or when the project should be completed. That calculation, we call it the float, and you also call it the slack. So there, is a, there are those two words, a float or slack, all right? So, so we are talking about a float, and it's also called slack, okay? Float and also slack. Okay, so uh, so we're saying now, how do you calculate it? You can either, you can use the, any, any of the columns, and then you can do ES minus LS or EF minus LF. Okay, so you can either use the start times or the finish times. So they, they should give you the same values. So notice like here, and of course you take the bigger number and subtract the smaller ones. So of course, uh, we expect the bigger number, uh, the, the latest times to be bigger than uh, than uh, the start times, I mean, the, early, the earliest times. The latest times should be bigger than earliest times automatically. So of course, you see, like here you used to do four minus two or seven minus five. So that, uh, that's a float. So if there is a, a float, if there is, a, of course, a, the, there is an allowance, then you should get something uh, greater than zero. So, uh, so it's saying that float, therefore, is equals to a latest finish minus earliest finish although we normally prefer to use the start time so let me start with that latest start minus earliest start but you can also use uh, the uh, the finish times latest start i mean uh, so this i'm uh, uh, the finish time, so the latest finish minus latest start. Okay. Uh, no, no, did I just put a uh, latest, uh, latest, or oh, earliest, sorry, earliest start. So latest, uh, latest uh, finish minus earliest finish. There should be both the finish if, if it is finished then both of them should be finished if it's start both of them should be start so let us finish minus earliest finish okay uh so that uh, that's how you calculate the float uh it is simply by a de description is the the amount of duration you can delay starting an activity without affecting at what point the the project should finish or at least should not affect the next activity that that particular activity may be may depend on and as we are going to see uh, when we look at uh, what we are calling out the critical path when we, which we also mentioned the last time is that uh, uh, the slack or the float for activities on what we call the the uh cre the critical path, the critical path, activities that fall al along the critical path, those activities have a, a float of zero. 
their float is zero. Activities on the critical path, their float is zero. Now, but let's revisit that concept of the critical path here. Uh, we say that the critical path essentially is uh, looking at uh, um, your activity uh, moving along a certain path through the nodes. So, for example, uh, you could go through, uh, if you, uh, let me get uh, this one a little down here. So, you could choose, for example, the path now from A, going to D, going to H, going to J. So, it's like saying now, uh, assuming these are towns and the roads uh, between various towns, uh, so you say, if uh, so, which road can you go from A to J? Uh, you know, along a certain path, so you can go from, assuming that these are towns, you say this town A, this town B, town H, town up to J. So from, from start, uh, the starting point to the finishing point, so we can go along the path of A, we go to D, uh, go to H, go to J, and come to the end. So that is one path. Uh, then for, yeah, that one, there is no other path there for, for, for A to J. When you come to B, uh, then you can go then to E, but you also can can go to F. So here now you have to do, first of all go through one one di 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 one path, so to speak. So go from B to E, then to H, and finally to the last activity. So that's another path, and then you go from B to F, then to J, and you are at the last uh, point. Uh, but then if you are at C, uh, of course you, are, you, see, you can always uh, do the start, but although this start will not affect the concept of the critical path. So let's just uh, talk about from activity C up to the last activity. So you can go from C, then to G, then to I, and finally to the last activity J. So those are the paths that are existing. And we say that the critical path uh, if you add the durations along each path, add the durations along each path, then the one which gives you the highest value, the path that gives you the highest total value, that path is the one which is called the critical path. That is a critical path. So you have to add the values, the durations. This time is the duration for each activity. So for A, it's one. For D, it's four. For H is six. For J is three. Of course, you also add the one for the last activity. So when you do the totals along each path, the path that gives you the highest total, that path is called the critical path. Now, in certain circumstances, you can get more than one critical path. You can get uh, several paths that whose totals are the same and they are the highest. So all of those will be uh, uh, different or a number of critical paths. And so we're saying, therefore, uh, let me get some place that I can type something here. I think I'm at the last, uh, the last uh, part of this page, uh, but I think it should uh, allow me to type something. Um, uh, I think it's not allowing me to type down there. Uh, so let me borrow some space up here, Kidogo. Okay, critical path. So you have to look at uh, uh, the various uh, parts and then calculate their, their total duration. So we have uh, A to, I'm just going to write the, the letters, A to D to H to J. So that's one path. For the sake of uh, moving around here, let me just keep them in the same line. Then the other path is uh, when you start from, from B, so it's just a path through the activities. So let me try to, and I'm going to have a challenge because uh, 
if I take the document down, uh, I might have a problem with my space up there. But I think you can see. Uh, so I have to just show you, and then I move it down again. So from B, you go to B E H J. So there is a B E H J as another path. Uh, so the other one, as again, I'll just uh, show you, and then I might have to uh, drop it again. So for the other path, uh, uh, sorry, another path uh, still from B is going from B to F. So that's another path. So that one, okay, let me remove this section. So that one uh, is B, F, and then finally to J, which is our last uh, point. So let's put that one. So there is B, F, J. And finally, there is uh, another path from C. C has uh, only one path. So when you come, we go to C, G, I, and finally J. So C, G, I, J. So C, E, C, G, C, G, I, J. So let's say. Uh, get back our space so c g i j so the what now is remaining is for you to calculate the total part the, the, the total duration for each of these uh and uh, for now i'm not going to i'm not going to do that i will let you do that later on but uh, in our previous diagram that information had been given uh, so i think uh, because of time and uh, uh, the reasons let us uh, borrow from this previous diagram because uh, these diagrams are the same of course uh, even this di other diagram you can calculate the critical path it's also required uh, and so this uh, our uh, our biggest paths they are full of them and according to the calculations that are done here uh, the first one gives us uh, 14 the next one gives us 16 the other ones give, uh, give us nine, and the other one give us 14. So for this particular case, the critical path is the one along B, E, H, J. So what you ask to, 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 to state the critical path, uh, you simply give the activities at that path. And so you say the critical path in this case is B, E, H, J. But it is important that you show how you calculated that. So it is important that this work shows on your page where you are, unless of course uh, uh, the space where you are filling in your answer does not have a space and it's only have a space for the answer. But otherwise we expect that this work should be shown on the page where you are saying that uh, the critical path is uh, this and that. And so if we had, uh, uh, several of them that are having 16, then you'll have several critical paths. But in this case, it seems like it's only one which has a, a, a high total. And so this, so the critical path in this case is B, E, H, J. Uh, and then that that total, uh, sometimes you can be asked, what is a, a, the, maybe the duration, what is the duration? What is the duration of this project? Normally, we ask what is the minimum duration? Minimum duration. So the minimum duration is the duration of the critical path. The minimum duration is the duration of the critical path. So for this case, the duration of this project, the minimum duration that this project can take, the minimum is 16 days. Is 16 days now why are we talking about minimum it's because there could be things that can affect uh how the project is completed maybe uh, suppose uh, all you have all the people that you are working with besides uh, they say now you are uh you you you, you are uh, overworking us 
uh, we don't want to work in your project and so we have uh, we have left work and they all disappear they resign uh, then you see by the time you get a new team that will delay your work so that's why we talk about the minimum the maximum uh, of course there is no maximum you cannot calculate maximum uh, i mean the maximum is not uh, anything you can calculate because it may be you know the taking longer than the minimum can be determined by many many things uh, including the leader of uh, the team the leader of the team can de decide to uh, resign and of course there still needs to be a leader maybe there are certain things that are technical and cannot uh, start without somebody uh, the leader of that technical skills and so by the time the project gets another leader maybe it has stopped and so that's why we, we cannot calculate maximum but we are saying the minimum uh is a calculate you can calculate according to a use of a, a tool that we are calling the network diagram so the network diagram can help us to estimate of course this is still an estimate it is not a, an exact calculation it is an estimate of the minimum so it gives us the minimum duration that the project can take and um, so the the critical path also gives us the minimum the, the the total duration of the critical path also gives us the the minimum uh, uh project time all right so we talked about the float and i would like us to just revisit that now now that we have uh the critical path here b e h j then when you go about the critical path if you calculate the float the float for each of these activities should be zero so the uh, uh this is when you calculate the float so float is ls minus es or lf minus ef so uh, so let's uh, just revisit our diagram uh, which is giving us those values all right so uh we have um, our diagram here so uh, of course i need to remember which is our critical path it is b e h j now h has gone a little up so let's just try to bring it down okay so b e h j those are the activities on the critical path and we also call them the critical activities so not only is are they the activities on the critical path we actually also call them the the critical activities in other words those ones cannot be delayed at all those ones you must not delay them at all if you want your project to finish according to schedule we say that one of the um uh, characteristic of uh, or one of the things that we consider for a successful project is the one which is finished in time and so finished in time therefore you cannot you must make sure that these activities that are, are the critical path or the activities of the critical path they are not delayed now one of the characteristic of the activities on the critical path is that their float should be zero in other words the numbers at, at, at each column when you do the subtraction they should be the same each column so look at j 14 14 16 16 go to h 8 8 13 13 go to e 3 3 7 7 i uh, go to uh to b of course this one is not calculated but we should expect it to be also one one two two if you do it correctly the same we expect no 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 sorry a is not in the critical path so so it's only this one which you expect that this will be one one two two now so if you uh do your your diagram and try to uh determine which is a critical path so one of the ways to do that to 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 know if you have done the correct uh, everything correctly is to check whether your values at each column are the same now the others could also have a similar say you know similar values uh, up and bottom but 
uh, they will not necessarily be lying on the critical path. So, but the ones at the critical path, they have what we are calling a float of zero. So LS minus ES or LF minus EF. Uh, so I think uh, that should be sufficient for a discussion of the on the network diagrams. Uh, we should uh, be okay with that now, the network diagrams. And um, so we have, um, uh, I think uh, to conclude here for today, I thought we can uh, look at uh, uh, the other uh, topic, but I think uh, we shouldn't go build uh, this time. Uh, it's already 12 that of course uh, we still have some time uh, in terms of uh, the class but uh, i think we'll end there for today uh, yes so let's uh, let's see so uh, i think uh, we can use just a few minutes and uh, see if we can fill in the the values for a and uh, maybe for b as well so let's see uh, so this uh, we're going to make it our uh time for interaction uh, so let me go up uh, essentially i think uh, i will uh, have to leave uh, this uh, uh this screen so you allow me to leave this screen um but uh, we need to remember these uh, two numbers for a and for b the top numbers, the, the row, the earliest times for A is 1, 1, and the earliest times for B is 1, 2. Uh, so what will be the latest time? So that's what we'll, uh, we'll be looking at, but I have to leave uh, uh, this uh, screen and uh, we go to, uh, no, no, we don't have to leave, uh, but the problem is you may not be able to see that. Uh, when we go to, I don't know, I think uh, you should be able to still see, even when you go to chart, to the chart area, you should be able to to do a chart there. Uh, but I think they are simple numbers, so I think let's just uh, leave the screen and uh, we interact without the screen. Uh, you just keep uh, remembering the numbers, uh, of course, I'll go to try and... Uh, Okay, so I'm going to remove the, the share. Okay, so we go to the, oh, I'll write this on the whiteboard, but I will not draw the boxes. So for A, activity A, so what I want you to do, you can actually do it. Uh, you don't have to wait for this. If you are remembering, just uh, go ahead and uh, chat, uh, do a chat and uh, fill in uh, the, the values for, for A. What are the latest times? So for A, the earliest, uh, the earliest times uh, are already given. It is one. So these are earliest times. E S E F is one and two. Uh, so I think I put a very small space here. So I think I need to put it bigger. So for A, so let me. Just a reminder, but I want to believe that you are still remembering uh, the e S E F for for A is one and two, and I mean is one and one. Sorry, one and one. So what are the the E we are talking about the E, uh, the LS and LF. So what is LF? So I think uh, because of the challenges of uh, 
working, uh, doing uh, writing on the whiteboard, uh, just do A. So what do you think will be the latest times? Latest start, latest finish. For activity B, no, no, for, for A still, still. So we are looking for values. So what are the latest start and latest finish for A? So I would like you to do that. Uh, put both values. Of course, we expect that uh, latest start should be a smaller value than latest finish. So how do you, how do you get that? And uh, maybe... Uh, if you want the diagram, I can put it back, but I uh, put it there. Uh, so I would like uh, as many of you to uh, do that. Let us start, let us finish dates for activity A. So I've displayed uh, the diagram again. So we want to fill these, these values here. So what is the latest start? Of course, that is going to require you to do a backward pass. Remember, latest times are done using backward pass. It means that you need to be coming from D going to A in order to fill in these values. So D to A to fill in the values here for, for A. Latest start, latest finish for A. Okay, so somebody quickly, of course, I uh, would like to see as many of you uh, putting some values there. Yes, yeah, so let me see your values. What are your latest start times and what are the latest? Of course, is the two values, latest start and the latest finish for activity A. What is the latest start and what is the latest finish? So uh, what I expect is that you put two values as you type your text. So if it is a uh, uh, 23, so I expect you to, to type 2, 3 or something like that just to, to indicate your values yes so uh, uh this is some some values now uh i hope uh, you you followed how we calculate the ls and lf so what will be the values for how what values do you feel feel here for for a for a for a what values do you feel in here? Okay. Let's have uh, a few of you uh, being uh, putting in your values. Yes, uh, just feeling uh, we can discuss them. Uh, don't uh, don't worry. If there is a mistake, of course uh, we can. Uh, check and see what uh, could be the problem about the, the values that you put. At this point, of course, uh, uh, what we are doing is uh, learning. So what uh, what values do we put at this particular point? Uh, what are the values? All right, I can see uh, Wangoi has uh, put some values there. Two and four. Yes, let, let me see more. Unless uh, you are support, if you're in the support of Wangoi, uh, I don't know what will be the best. Uh, you can just say same. Although, if you see other values, you not be sure what uh, what you are supporting. If you say same, but I think uh, we can discuss that later. Yes. Yeah, so if you support uh, Wangoi, you will just write same. Uh, but if you have uh, a different uh, uh, uh calculation uh, you can put your values 
All right, and uh, the rest, uh, whichever the values they may support, uh, they can just say yes. I mean, uh, same. Uh, this is mainly for the sake of time and uh, avoiding too much typing. Yes, yeah, so if you support Wango, uh, just uh, write same. If you have some different values, uh, put uh, uh, your values. All right, so I can see Angela is also supporting Wango's uh, values. Don't uh, don't be worried uh, if you have uh, you think uh, different values. Uh, Molimu has not yet said uh, which ones uh, are correct uh, yet. So feel free to write your own if you feel that you should be different. After your considerations, you might feel that uh, maybe it should be some different values. But if you want, uh, if you that uh, yours are going to be the same, you just write same that uh, I think we'll uh, we understand. Uh, yes, quite a number of you are supporting what Wangoi has written. Uh, so many of you are coming up with the same. Yes, so let's keep going. Uh, write as many. I want to see as many of you uh, making a reply. Don't uh, worry. Uh, even if you just write same, that's okay. It means that supporting that it is two and four. Uh, which is very much okay. That is all. Even same in this case is a value. Okay. All right. Uh, well, maybe I can respond uh, because of time. Now, now there is a problem there. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, now, Densevilla is also writing something, so we can let let her complete. Densevilla, con conclude your typing. You are writing something there. Uh, okay, now Densevilla is not writing anymore. All right. So uh, now this value, uh, there is a problem, uh, Milka. And uh, because you see, now you need to be coming from the, you know, these backpass, eh? latest times are viewed using backpass. And you notice that uh, D, according to what, uh, we, if you know, of course, we have to first of all, assume that these values are correct. Uh, we are not going to try to uh, prove them now, but uh, let's uh, accept they are correct. If they are correct, okay. So if they are correct, then it means that uh, this activity must start on day four, uh, because here we are talking in terms of days. This activity must start on day four. For this activity that it is depending, so D is depending on A. So since D is depending on A, then the latest, now remember for, for backward pass, the value that you first, first forget is the latest finish the latest finish date is what you first get because you are calculating it from the uh, the, the values that are i mean the activities that are ahead so you are, you are getting this value from d now d must start on day four then you are a must the latest it should finish is day three latest it must finish latest on day three to allow the uh, D to start on day four. And therefore the latest date should be three. The latest date should be three. Now, if the latest date should be three, then now you calculate the other value using that. So you do now three minus one, the duration of A, my, uh, you know, subtract the duration of A. So three minus one is two, two, plus one, two plus, plus one. No, no, sorry, I think I did the, the wrong thing. So three minus one is two, two plus one is three. So actually they are going to be both three. So the latest start is three, latest finish is three. Of course, I think we expected that way, just like we said, because it's only taking one day. So if it starts on day three, then it should be completed 
the same day because this is an activity that he needs only one day to complete. So the correct values, therefore, are, are three and three. For this one, the correct values are three and three. Um, so it's not two and three now, Tali. So thank, uh, that's a good try and also a good try for all those that um, have uh, been helping Wangui as well. So we uh, uh, that, that was a good effort, uh, Wangui, and all those that supported uh, you as well as uh, Naftali here. Yeah, good effort, but uh, so Naftali is also not correct. So this activity is needing on one on one day. So if it is starts, if it is ending on day three, it means it also started on day three. So those values should be the same according to calculations. Of course, yeah, I'm doing calculation, so I'm saying uh, if this day, if the D must start on day four then d i mean a must complete on day three latest it must complete on day three and then if it completes on day three we will be able to start our d on day four latest remember now we are looking at the latest so uh, if this uh, this uh, activity must start latest on day four then a must complete latest on day three. And therefore now from there, and then we calculate the other value. Now, now that uh, we did not get it right for A, uh, let me extend a little bit by a few minutes and uh, ask us also to do B. So let's see whether now it will be easier for us to do our B. What are the values for B? Uh, so notice that uh, here, I remember we said, you have now to look at these two activities. So uh, E must start latest on day three. F must start latest on day 10. So what should be the latest date to end, to finish B? What is the latest date to finish B? To allow E and F to be started and to be done. So some of these values, you have to fill them by argument rather than calculation. But the others which you can, you are working by calculation or they allow you to do calculation by some, but some it is by argument, is by uh, arguing about it uh, rather than calculating. Yes, uh, uh, for happiness, uh, the values there are what? Uh, so let us finish for B is two to allow E to begin on day three. Yes, that's a very correct argument. You know, when you state it that way, we will not uh, even have to argue about it because that's correct. If E must start on day three, then B must finish on day two. It, uh, e, B must finish on day two to allow E to start on day three. And therefore, filling the other values then, uh, uh, from what we are given from happiness, I think uh, uh, I can see, uh, yes, uh, Kasure there, uh, I hope uh, you have now corrected your value because uh, according to what uh, happiness has given us, uh, the letters that, that uh, B must finish is day two. And so your values uh, need to be corrected. It is not two and three, so it should be. And uh, now we have a value from Naftali there. I think uh, that should be the correct uh, order. So if you have to finish B by day two, then it must start. It needs two days. So it must start by day one in order to uh, finish 
at day two. Yes, so thank you, uh, Kasure. Uh, I'm uh, glad to understand that uh, it is now clear for you as well. And I want to believe that it is also clear with the, uh, the, the rest of the, uh, the those attending the class, uh, how to deal with this. So this uh, diagram, uh, the network diagram, many times we are expected also to give the latest times and the earliest times. And it is best if you can just uh, do them right away at the diagram. It, the diagram makes, makes it a bit easier to work out these values. You can imagine if you don't have the, the diagram and you are trying to calculate these uh, earliest times and latest times, of course, you can just use uh, just a table, uh, but uh, it is far much easier if it is done on the diagram. After filling these values correctly, the next thing is to uh, calculate or to find or determine the critical path. Once in a while, you may be asked also to the, um, uh, the, you know, compute compute the float of certain activities. Uh, normally, since the, in most cases the activities are the critical path, their float is zero, then most of the time you'll be asked to calculate the float of the non-critical activities. Activities that are not along the critical path. Those activities that are not along the critical path, we call them non critical activities. Uh, so you need to also have a, um, a philosophical understanding of um, uh, all these uh, statements, you know, float, uh, critical path, and all that. Uh, you need to have a, a philosophical understanding of them and be able to define them. Uh, as we conclude, uh, uh, the, the, so I'm not going to uh, do my presentation, uh, but to just highlight a few other things uh, that I need you to do from this document is to read about uh, the difference between the path method and the critical path method. See, so there is a path and there is a critical path method, and there is a section of this document that is uh, given about what is the difference between the two methods in terms of uh, their origin, because of course they are used uh, both. Uh, uh, the same way for in projects, but their origination, the, the way they, or, they originated, they originated differently. So there are a few differences, and one of the differences is uh, given at this particular area here um, about um, how we calculate durations for, uh, when we are using the part, the PERT uh, approach. How do we calculate the durations that we give? per activity. That's where the main uh, um, difference is. So the other thing that I would like you to uh, look at is how can we suppose uh, we feel that uh, uh, after doing the, uh, the the diagram, it is showing that uh, there are too many, you know, it's, the, the duration is becoming too long. Uh, so how can we shorten the duration? And so there are some suggestions of shortening the duration uh, without affecting the quality of the work. And that is also described uh, somewhere here. It has more to do uh, manipulating the float. So uh, we say, okay, there is a determine the critical part there, but there is some else that I wanted uh, just to highlight. How can we shorten the project duration? What are some of the things that we can uh, do to shorten the duration? And we make use of the of the float. We make use of the float. So read this part as well. Uh, using critical path analysis to make schedule trade-offs. So remember to read that and see how we can utilize uh, the float to uh, try and make the project duration shorter. So there are certain uh, techniques that are described here, uh, which I would like you uh, to to read. Now, for the other topic that I had hoped uh, we'll also cover, I want to give it to the class as an assignment because uh, you realize that we are, are now starting to get a bit short of uh, our time for completing the syllabus. And so allow me to, to just uh, mount that document and I say something small as we close. I'm not going to extend for too long, just a few minutes 
and we should be closing our session for today. I just allow a few minutes. I just say uh, mount this other document uh, so we can. Uh, so I'm giving this uh, document and the, the subject it gives is uh, an assignment, an assignment read, uh, reading assignment for you to capture the concepts. So this document is talking about uh, what we are calling uh, uh, project initiation, project initiation and planning. Actually, it is project initiation and planning. But uh, at the title there, it says a project initiation. In other words, what are some of the things that uh, need to be done uh, right at the start of the project, including how do the projects start? And this, uh, some of these uh, concepts you actually did learn from uh, your unit on systems analysis and design. So there are quite a number of uh, concepts that are uh, given here, which you should recall from uh, systems analysis and design. So read about a uh, project initiation. What are the issues that uh, come up at just when the project is starting? First of all, where do the projects come from? And it says that uh, uh, the initiation phase is the first phase in the project. And in this phase, a business problem or a, a business opportunity is identified. And we talk about the problems that create projects. So uh, some of these uh, you'll be able to recall from some of your uh, other units. And so I want you to, I won't leave this uh, document for you to read and uh, make sure that you make a good, good uh, reading uh, because uh, uh, the fact that I'm not going to do a presentation on this does not mean that uh, some questions in the final exam for this semester could come also from this uh, particular area the project initiation phase of the project. And the other one is the planning phase of the project. So what are the issues that need to be planned even before the project starts? Because it's the planning. The planning phase is a time that happens also before the actual project work starts. So what do you, what are the various things that you need to plan ahead? So develop the project plan, develop resource plan, develop financial plan and for all these uh, develop communication plan develop uh, develop procurement plan uh, then contact suppliers and of course then uh, do a review of uh, your planning so all these are issues that are done uh, before the actual project work start so initiation phase and the planning phase of the project so this one I'm leaving to the students uh, to read read this document but of course also read uh, any other documents uh, that relate to the concepts so that you are clear with all these concepts, what, are, what is a terms of reference, what is a business case, et cetera, et cetera, some concepts that are highlighted uh, around uh, this particular topic, project initiation and planning. So uh, read about that, uh, read these documents already at the portal. Uh, the other thing, of course, that... Uh, I want to encourage you to do is also to visit the portal. Unfortunately, I think this one, uh, uh, because of uh, how I'm bringing this, I'll let you uh, fill in your uh, your your uh, discussion forum later because it's actually based on this uh, particular uh, subject of uh, project initiation about the business case and uh, things like that. So let you have a, maybe fill it uh, sometime uh, uh, later in the day uh, so that you have uh, looked at uh, some of this. Uh, so you need, of course, to visit there and look at the question uh, for discussion so that you are able to find the materials, of it, including this uh, particular document, so that you are able to fill in and respond to the discussion for, uh, forum. Okay, so I think uh, I've extended a little more because of uh, trying to cover even this area. We took uh, quite some time uh, looking at um, uh, the critical part because uh, of the calculations that we had to, to do. And of course, there are other issues that uh, relate to that particular area. I did not want to rush it, uh, but I want to believe that uh, the concepts are now clear. You will know how to 
draw the diagram, fill in the earliest times and the, the finish times, uh, find out the find the critical path, uh, calculate a float for a certain uh, activity, uh, etc. So I think that uh, was a uh, 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 maybe it was a uh, uh, helpful uh, to give it time. Uh, but uh, so you need to start look for uh, for examples. There are very many examples in the internet. You just Google network diagrams, uh, like, uh, like example of a network diagram or things like that. And you should find quite a number of examples in the internet. Uh, but of, of course, you can start with this one. See if you can actually do it without uh, checking uh, the values. Uh, just do the boxes without the values. Put the activity and the uh, and the duration, and then uh, try to fill in the diagram and see whether you can uh, uh, get a similar diagram with the values that are in our document. But there are many examples from the internet as well. You can use to practice how to find the critical path and fill in some of those uh, other values that can be asked in a, especially in a question. Uh, also, otherwise uh, with that, I think uh, that is sufficient for today. Uh, unless there is a question, we can give uh, like five minutes uh, if there is a question or a comment or a point of clarification, uh, then uh, Mualimu can uh, respond. Uh, and of course, the other students sometimes uh, allow also the students to respond. Some things are general. Uh, so any question, any point of clarification, uh, then uh, otherwise we want to close uh, today's uh, online meeting. Okay, so I think then uh, we can uh, end our meeting there for today. Uh, thank you so much for each one of you having uh, been able to come and uh, participate uh, in the class. Uh, so don't forget to check uh, the, um, uh, the uh, discussion forum, uh, find uh, the issue that is raised there. Uh, but as I said, they might actually need uh, to, uh, to first of all, uh, uh, read a little more. So I'm not asking you to do that uh, right now because of uh, it's uh, something that you need to uh, research and uh, respond. But it's not a, a very long uh, uh, a work that is needed there. But uh, yes, you need, of course, to research in Logo uh, so that you're able to respond uh, efficiently. Thank you so much. Thank you. And also, thank you for all of you that are also writing some text. Uh, responding with a precision and of course I know that uh, even the others uh, would uh, respond the same thank you so much and uh, welcome all of you thanks so much so I give I say now I enjoy the rest of the afternoon goodbye Thank you.